Welcome to part three of this ABAP object oriented tutorial video series. In our previous video, we got into really the meat of object oriented and talked about the differences between static and instance. Uh, but let's continue from there. And I'm actually going to start with the exactly the same class that we were working with at the end of the last video. And let's talk about visibility. Um, we haven't really discussed this, but, but maybe you've seen here that we have a public section, a protected section, and a private section. And before we go into the details of what those are, let's see the problem that we potentially have with our class so far. You know, we were able to tie data to our instance of our class and made it very convenient, as we saw in the previous video, to access that data and use it in subsequent method calls of the same instance without having to re-retrieve it from the database. It's right here, the, the data flight is where we're caching that data, this variable called flight. But you might notice it's here in the public section. Anything in the public section is actually accessible outside of our class as well. And we want that for our methods that are going to be called by other classes and programs and, and, and whatnot. But maybe having all of our data accessible to the outside isn't a good idea because let's come here to the tester and we'll see after we load the instance of our class. But before we calculate the price, I'm going to come right here. I'm going to kind of come to the instance. And you'll see this flight data is available because it's in the public section. So I can actually come here to flight and uh, let's come here to the price and I'm going to manipulate it. Okay. Uh, let's just say uh, Right, so I'm actually going to override the data from inside the class that's inside the class instance, and because that data is going to be used in the subsequent uh, flight uh, price calculation, it's going to throw off the calculation. So let's go ahead and activate this and test. And what do we see here? Now, our price, even our calculated price, is only $10.01. Because we've reset the base price that's used in the calculation inside of our class. That's not good. We don't want the calling program to be able to mess around with this data. After we've read it from the database, we want it to stay consistent. We only want it to change if something inside the class changes it. We don't want the caller to be able to change it. They can do all kinds of bad things. Maybe they weren't being malicious. Maybe they were just not being very careful. And they changed something inside of our class without even realizing it. So this is bad. We, we don't want this. So let's, uh, let's take a copy of our class and let's make just one very small change to it. Okay, so I've already prepared this. And what we see here is we've taken the data and we've moved it down here to the private section, okay? So data flight type DMO flight. And all that's going to do is that's going to keep any external callers from being able to see the data. And we could do the same thing with methods as well. We could put methods in the private and then only the class instance itself can call them. So it's a way of controlling access to parts of our class, keeping some things to ourselves, not allowing the outside to control them. And this is very common. We, we might have data that 
that we store inside of our class. We don't want anybody to directly access it. We want them to have to come through class uh, methods of our class in order to access or manipulate that data. So we're we're putting barriers. We're we're controlling our access so we have uh, an an interface, not not to be confused with OO interface, but a logical interface into and and out of our class. The other thing that I want to show you here that we did when we uh, we brought this over, it's not directly related to visibility, but let's let's look at these side by side as well. If uh, if you remember here, uh, calculate flight price was originally an exporting because we had two fields that we wanted to send out, right? But remember, we talked about how the returning concept was so much nicer um, uh, uh, syntactically when we call it, you know, to be able to call use the functional way of calling a method and being able to do method chaining. Uh, our code is more readable uh, for the most part if you don't go crazy overboard, but but Generally speaking, it's it's considered better form, but our returning can only have a single value. Well, in ABOP, that's really not a problem. We can just create a structure if we want to return multiple values. So we'll take our price and our currency code and we'll structure that back into a type. And then we can use the returning parameter on, on the price. So not directly related to visibility once again, but just to kill two birds with one stone here, uh, we wanted to go ahead and, and show you uh, uh, a slight change there to the, to the functional style. So let's go ahead and test this now as well. Let me go ahead and clear my console. Let's pull up the new tester class. to drag classes into the editor window and I end up dragging them literally into the into the editor itself and uh, not into another window like I wanted. Sorry about that. Let's move that over so we can get them side by side. And what we see now, the code looks pretty much the same, except now uh, when we call the calculate flight price, the, the coding is actually a little simpler here. Let's, let's go ahead and get these two side by side the two testers so we see we, we still create an instance of our class um, and then we call calculate flight price but does it isn't the code just leaner easier to read instead of having the importing and, and putting those into those two values we're able to just return that into a structure we don't even have to declare the structure now in our uh, in our calling code we've got the inline declaration here uh, implicitly with the with the data statement hop's gotten so much more convenient in, in that regard um, but now you know, we have the calculate flight price we also have code that's more uh, mutable over time if, if we would add a, another field to the, the output of the calculate flight price, you know, in the old world here with the implicit importing, we would have to, have, you know, have another variable declaration, another importing parameter. But here we could just add it to our structure in our class and it, and it would flow out and it would just be available in our, our calling code. So, so we have uh, more maintainable code over time following this approach. But you'll also see here, I'll try to come in and, and make the same sort of bad adjustment here. Um, if I go to my instance, a zero zero one seven. Uh, now, you see there is no flight. I can't access flight. Um, if I try this, you'll see here. I'm getting a syntax error, right? Flight is not visible, so field is is unknown because it's not visible outside of that class. Okay, but the rest of the code is essentially the same. So I'll have to take this out if we want to execute it. That's fine. And if we go ahead and run as, 
And we see the same output, except now I can't, as you saw there, I can't manipulate the price. It's private inside of the class. It's going to stay inside, safely inside the instance of that class, and only my class itself can alter it. So another very powerful concept of object-oriented is this idea of, uh, of scoping or visibility of the parts of the class. And we'll revisit this topic again when we get into the last video in the series um, on inheritance and polymorphism, that's when that other visibility that we didn't talk about yet, protected, comes into play. Um, because there could be instances where you want some classes to be able to access some parts of your code, but not other classes. Um, you know, classes that are related to your class, uh, but that's concepts that we haven't quite gotten to yet. We'll, we'll come to that later when we talk about inheritance, uh, relationships between classes that are more complex than just the class and its consumer. Uh, but, but for now, we'll, we'll stay with that.